Uh, if your company has been registered to ISO 9001, you have most likely worked with a certification body, often called a registrar. The majority of registrars are themselves audited, checked out by an accreditation body. In the United States, this is the ANSI ASQ National Accreditation Board, or the ANAB, or ANAB, ANAB as some people sure. call it. Mm -hmm. uh, ANAB is the accreditation body for management systems certification, and an accreditation body as well for laboratories, inspection bodies, reference material producers, and proficiency testing providers under the A-Class brand. So what does the NAAB do? And why should we care? Well, today we are pleased to have on our show Randy Doherty, Vice President of the NAAB. Hello, Randy. How are you this morning? Good morning. Thank you. So, Randy, first of all, before we get started, tell us what an accreditation body actually is. You know, what, what do they do? So, what, what is ANAB's function? ANAB's function is to uh, evaluate certification bodies and make sure that they conform to the international standards, uh, of which some of the key requirements relate to both competence and impartiality. Okay, and why should we care? I mean, I, I would say most, most registrars, most uh, certification bodies, if, well, not all, but certainly probably 95 or 99% of them are accredited, uh, both here in the United States and in, uh, in, in Europe as well. Uh, why should we care? Why does it matter if my accreditation body is accredited to the NAAB? Well, a couple of reasons. First, uh, informed purchasers likely are not going to accept an unaccredited certificate. And I'm thinking of sectors like the automotive industry, the aerospace sector, the telecommunications sector. They're going to look for uh, a certification to be from an accredited, uh, a certification body that is accredited. So, uh, go ahead. Second, uh, uh, if, if you're going to get certified, you want that certificate recognized internationally. So working with an accreditation body that is an IEF MLA signatory is going to give you that international recognition also. Okay, so what you've kind of spoken of right, right there, it seemed to me kind of more for lack of a better term, let's say marketing reasons. If I want to, if, if, I, if I need to get into a certain market or if I need to have certain customers who are requiring an, an accredited, uh, that my certificate comes from an accredited certification body or registrar, then I'm going to have to go to one of those. So those are kind of marketing reasons. But aside from that, what do I actually get out of it? And I guess the point I want to, I guess, get to here is we've had a couple of articles in the last uh, month or so that have been critical, uh, if, if not of accreditation, uh, have been critical certainly of certification bodies. So as a customer of a registration, of, of a certification body, let's say, let's say Quality Digest gets registered to ISO 9000, and, or we want to, and so we go through all the, we jump through all the hoops, we pay our registrar, our registrar sends an auditor out, our first, our first audit the, uh, the, the auditor finds some non-conformances. Mm -hmm. And we believe, as a company, that those non-conformances have nothing to do with reality. We think either the non-conformances uh, just don't make sense or we don't believe that they really address what ISO 9001 uh, requirements are. So we complain to the registrar. And we say, Mr. Registrar, we, we think your auditor is out to lunch. What are you going to do to it? What are you going to do about it? And let's say the registrar supports the audit findings. And they say, no, uh, Dirk Ducharme at Quality Digest, uh, our auditor stands, and we and our auditor stand by what was found. Um, you're going to have to fix that nonconformance, or we are not going to issue a ISO 9001 certificate. So at that point, do I have an option? Can I go to the NAAB and complain? Yeah, you can. You, you get a couple of benefits by working with an accredited certification body. First. Uh, if the CB is accredited, they have to conform with uh, ISO 17021, the, the international standard uh, that applies to the CB, which means they have to have a documented complaint and appeals process uh, where, where your complaint or appeal would be heard by people within the certification body that are knowledgeable but not directly involved in, in the dispute you have so that they can make an, an unbiased decision. But if you're unhappy following that, Yes, you could uh, make the complaint to ANAB, uh, and in fact, we've made it fairly easy for people to file a complaint 
you, you can do it directly from our website. And what what would the NAA, sorry, ANAB, I'm sorry, it's easier for me to say ANAB. What would ANAB do? <laughs> what would ANAB do in that case? Do they go to the registrar or do they act as an intermediary? Um, I mean, do, do you have any power, so to speak, over the certification body? Well, yeah, we have the same kind of power over a certification body that the certification body would have over you. If, uh, if the certification body doesn't conform to requirements, then they could lose their accreditation. Uh, the, the process we use is uh, we would look at your complaint and we would assign it to an investigator. Now, the, the investigation is going to vary depending on what the complaint is, but it, it, could in, it could include us going to the certification body's offices again. It could include us uh, coming along on the next audit that they do with you, trying to find out what the issue is and, and make a decision. Uh, so, yeah, we, we tried to, to uh, actually uh, provide confidence to you that your complaint's been heard, uh, we understand your complaint, but then we make a decision about what we think the actual uh, valid answer is. Sometimes we're going to support the CBs, sometimes we're going to support uh, you. And Randy, I had a quick question that just kind of came to me, and I don't want to spring it on you, but what the heck, we got you, so I will. Um, who, who interprets uh, language? You know, so, sometimes a standard or a, a, a directive may be written in such a way that there's some, some latitude in terms of interpreting that, and, and maybe a, a customer may interpret it one way and a registrar may interpret it another. Like, for instance, we had a recent article, a Dirk referenced earlier, where, where the language state-of-the-art was in a directive, and there was, there's some varying interpretations about, well, I think, I think I'm state-of-the-art, and maybe the registrar may say, well, no, you're not. So who, who interprets something like that? That might be a language question. Well, if it's a straight interpretation of the standard, uh, we'd go back to the standards body and ask them to uh, clarify the language if, if what you're asking for is a straight interpretation of what does the standard say. If the issue is one where you don't agree with how somebody's applying the words of the standard, because there are a lot of disputes where you can have difference of opinion and the words of the standard will support either either party's uh, application of the words, if you will. Uh, in that case, uh, you could go to, to the International Accreditation Forum Technical Committee and you, and you could ask them to give uh, a consensus opinion of, of how that uh, wording should be applied. Okay, and, uh, Randy. Well, we're we're kind of running out of uh, running out of time here. But just just to recap, uh, this is kind of what I got from this, and feel free to, to tag on here at the end. So the it sounds like you're saying that, that the value of uh, an accreditation body uh, in in terms of what what the client gets from it is number one, their certificate if it comes from an accredited registrar or certification body is going to have more widespread. Um, uh, acceptance both here in the United States within their customers and of course uh, internationally um, and also that you have some place to go if you disagree with your certification body with their findings you have somebody above them that you can go to in order to dispute any findings is, is there any other advantage to uh, accreditation well I think you hit a couple of the key ones that would, would affect an organization that's being certified I, I think those are the probably the key point. Okay. Well, Randy, thank you for joining us uh, this morning, uh, your afternoon. We appreciate you being on. Uh, once again, um, I believe you said that there is, if you do have a dispute, just since we were talking about this, I believe I did see there was a link on your website uh, where there's actually a form you fill out if you have uh, some sort of dispute. Is, is that right? Yep, that's correct. And, and once the thing is entered into the system, we have to deal with it. So uh, you, you can have confidence that if you do file that complaint, there is going to be action on it. Okay. Well, thank you. That was uh, Randy Doherty, Vice President of the ANAB. Randy, thank you for joining us. Thank you.